Boeing has had a five-year return of negative 43%, but is this the turnaround for a company who has been in business for over a century? Today's video will be an in-depth analysis of Boeing stock, and will determine if now is a good time to buy based on business operations, fundamental, and technical analysis. Let's start from the bottom up by covering business operations by segment and geography to determine how and where Boeing generates revenue. Boeing divides their revenue into four main segments. Their primary business segment at 39% of revenue is commercial airplanes, and their best-selling jet by a long shot is the 737. The next largest business segment is defense, space, and security at 35% of revenue, which engages in the research, development, production, and modification of manned and unmanned military aircraft and weapon systems for strike, surveillance, and mobility. Their last significant segment is global services at 26% of revenue, which provides parts, logistics, maintenance, engineering, and upgrades for their aircraft. From a geographical perspective, 41% of their revenue is derived internationally, which is primarily dependent on the commercial airplane segment. One major benefit to Boeing's business is that the commercial airline industry is a duopoly. Airbus is the only other significant competitor globally and their size market. Although China has recently developed its own jet production, China has historically made up a significant portion of Boeing's commercial sales, which will likely be diminished into the future. Another potential pro is that Boeing contracts a significant portion of their business through the U.S. government, and this is one customer they'll likely never lose. Although, the defense sector of Boeing's business has been losing money lately, so this could be seen as a con or even as a concentration risk. The last pro is that there is a surprisingly high turnover rate with commercial jets. As we see here where Boeing states that 18% of Western-built commercial jet aircraft were parked at the end of 2022 and may potentially be retired. Furthermore, as the global economy develops and becomes wealthier, Boeing will sell more airplanes, being that there are limited options to choose from. The most obvious con to Boeing's business is that they've had numerous safety mishaps that have resulted in death, cost and litigation judgments, and a decrease in aircraft sales and backlog of orders. Also, the majority of Boeing's business is tied to the macro-level economy. If the macro-level economy slows significantly, their backlog of orders can vanish. Boeing states this as a risk on their annual report, stating that customers can, at will, cancel their aircraft orders, and worse yet, they state many of their customers are less than credit worthy. Another con to their business is that they have set price contracts for products. If their products cost more to produce than what they initially anticipated, they'd take a loss on that sale. Compare this to something like the Hershey Company, where at will, Hershey can change the weight and price of their products in accordance with production costs. Virtually the only competition to Boeing's primary business segment, commercial aircraft, is Airbus who produces planes in the same markets. Airbus is currently a much stronger business than Boeing, partly due to having less safety concerns. Moreover, they are profitable while Boeing has had negative net income for the last four years. In the defense industry, Boeing faces more significant competition. It competes with government contracts with other defense companies, including Lockheed Martin, Northrop Grumman, Raytheon, General Dynamics, and SpaceX. They appear to be losing this competition too, with this segment having declining revenue over the last three years. Here we have revenue per share over 10 years, graphed with this orange line and the green shading. Generally, we want this to be trending up and consistent. Boeing's revenue has been variable and growing slowly, with a revenue growth rate of only 2.6% and a significant revenue drawdown from 2018 to 2020 of 23% annualized. From a five-year perspective, it's even worse with a revenue decline of 2.3%. From a trailing 12-month perspective, though, revenue is picking up by a CAGR of 11.4%. Now let's check out their earnings. Here we have EPS over 10 years graphed with the orange line and greed shading, and we see Boeing is collapsing with a decline rate of 0.8%, and their earnings have been negative for the last four years. Worse yet, their highest year of income over the decade in 2018 of 18.05 cents per share was lower than their worst year for income, which was negative $21 a share. And as of the last four quarters, their earnings continue to be negative. Their free cash flow is slightly better than their net income, having a growth rate of 1.6%, although they have still barely produced free cash flow, which is a big red flag, especially for such a well-established company who should have their business model down pat. Here we have shares outstanding over 10 years, which miraculously has declined by a kicker of 2.3%. 
But since they've had such consistently negative net income lately, we know they're accruing debt instead of issuing shares for capital. Now, if we look at the balance sheet, we see cash and short-term investments compared to total liabilities over the last five years. Their cash has basically stayed flat while their total liabilities have grown significantly from $116 billion to $151 billion as of their most recent quarter. If we add back their cash to their total liabilities, they have a true total liability level of $138 billion. And if we compare that to their highest year of net income over the past 10 years of $10.5 billion, their debt is still an outstanding 13 times net income. Or in other words, it would take them 13 years of their best year to pay off their debt. At this point, I typically look at dividends and price to earnings metrics, but since Boeing has had negative net income, they are wisely not paying a dividend. And since their net income is negative, the PE ratio is irrelevant. That concludes the fundamental portion of this video, and Boeing's financial position is apparent and concerning. I'm currently using Fast Graphs, which I think is an amazing tool for visualizing fundamentals in comparison to price. And I'm also an affiliate. If you like this software and want to support my work on YouTube, I'd greatly appreciate it if you used my link to sign up, which you'll find below, and they also offer a free trial. Here we are on Thinkorswim, and we see Boeing over a 10-year period, and they've managed to have a return of 64%. From a standard deviation perspective, they are trading below the average price for this period, indicated by the center yellow channel line, at a discount of roughly 21%. In terms of support and resistance, price recently bounced off an ill-defined support level of $175, and price was rejected by a prominent resistance level around $260. Lastly, the RSI is in the middle of the channel, not indicating a favorable time to buy or sell. From a 5-year perspective, Boeing has trended down, having a price decline of 43%. From a standard deviation perspective, they are trading above average. The support and resistance levels are the same from the 10-year chart, which price is in between. The RSI does indicate a more favorable buying point, but this is misaligned with our other indicators. This is a good example of contrasting fundamental and technical analysis that shows just how misaligned the two evaluation methods can be. From a 10-year perspective, the standard deviation indicates at least a fair time to buy, but fundamentally, Boeing will likely struggle for some time to come as they are losing money and they have a huge debt load. That concludes my analysis of Boeing. If you're looking for a stock that recently checked all the boxes of fundamental and technical analysis, check out this video. Thank you for watching. I'm not a financial advisor and this is not financial advice. This is for educational and entertainment purposes.